Today we're going to be building this plate roller out of materials that I had laying around from other jobs over the past couple years. I had some Schedule 40 laying out in the woods from when the pipeline came through years ago and they left that behind, so I took the razor out and picked it up and drug it up to the house. I decided to cut the pipe down to size since it was around 30 feet. Um, I cut it with just a cutoff wheel out in the yard before I took it into the garage and cut it up with my chop saw. I could have taken my chop saw out there, but I didn't want to leave a bunch of you know metal shavings to rust in the in the yard for the next couple of years and step on. Then I went ahead and picked up some inch and a quarter round stock and turned the ends down on the lathe. These are what are going to be riding on the actual bearing surfaces themselves. Here's my CNC plasma um, table just scribing some stuff for the end plates. You guys will see those again towards the end of the video uh, where these are actually located. That scribe comes in handy not just for you know writing things or part numbers onto parts but also for marking bend lines or center marking holes. Um, you'll see you know later on what we use this for. So I mark both of the ends just with you know USA and uh, Trinity Fab Works which is my LLC. Um, just just because I could. This is right when I put my scribe on and so I wanted to give it you know a job for it to do. I'm going to go ahead and clean the back of these parts up. Now some of these are pretty small and I didn't have a magnetic chuck yet when I made this video. That magnetic chuck has saved my gloves and my fingers and some time um, just by being able to lay out a lot of small parts at once, turn the chuck on, and knock all the dross or slag off the back of these cuts, um, and then flip them over, turn it back on, and knock it off the, the, the front side, or just clean up the front side. Um, it's definitely sped up the process quite a bit. So I cut out some donuts so that I could slide a smaller Schedule 40 pipe into a larger Schedule 40 pipe to make it more rigid, more like a solid roller would be, as opposed to just pipe, so I wouldn't get any flex. It's going to be 36 inches across, and so if I'm rolling 3 sixteenths, I didn't want it to flex. So I cut these donuts out for the, the main spindle here and tacked them on, and then I they were you know, almost a press fit. I had to hammer them in, and then I hammered them into that um, piece of pipe, and then I put some around the outside of that pipe as well and welded those on and then um, press that whole assembly into a three and a half inch schedule 40 pipe and uh, just tack the edges. I took the top roller um, threw it on the lathe and turned it down just to so it would, it would turn true and you can see that here on the right hand side of the screen um, that's the one I end up using on top. The other two I never actually turned down I left them um, just like they were. They actually spun pretty true afterwards. I was pretty happy with them and I didn't think it was worth the time to turn down on the lathe. Here's that top roller uh, when I turned it down. Now the pipe's not very consistent. You can see where there's some of that uh, paint left over, that coating um, left over on the outside of this pipe. Um, but it was turning true and so I just went ahead and left it. It doesn't really bother me. The look isn't, you know, a, a deal breaker for me by any means. That noise you can hear in the background is cars passing um, by my house. I live on kind of a busy road, and uh, unfortunately, that's the background noise for all of these videos. So as I was assembling this, uh, I noticed it was wanting to pull to one side when I was welding on those braces. This whole thing actually bolts together but I had to weld the pipe onto those braces that then bolt to those end plates. So what I did is take out the uh, porta power and I was able to jack it into place and um, then I was able to finish up tack welding those braces on the bottom and getting everything squared up. Worked out really good and again the porta power made itself employee of the week. Um, it's a really really handy tool to use. I don't use it every day but when I need it it helps out tremendously. I went ahead and went up to my local farm store and picked up some sprockets and uh, some hubs that I could slide onto the end of these shafts to make this a powered unit and make both of those bottom rollers move at the same time. I built this cart separate from the roller itself so I needed to make some tabs that I could bolt to the roller in existing bolt holes and then weld onto the cart 
to keep them as a solid unit. So I went ahead and cut those out on the plasma table and then I bolted them up to the existing bolt holes that were on the roller itself and then I was able to just weld the seams um, onto the cart or weld the sides of those plates onto the cart on all four corners there so that uh, it wouldn't give me any issues and it wouldn't slide around on me. Alright, some of the things I have to change, I've got to shorten up some of these bushings. Um, a couple of those are a little long, so I need to just take those out and cut them down to size. Uh, other things, you know, I need to um, get it powder coated, that's one thing I want to do. But these bolts here, um, those are supposed to be pins. When I designed it, I was going to put pins through there, and I thought it would be better to bolt it all together while I welded everything up, so it would stay true. But I'm going to have pins on both sides so that I can pull the pins. And that whole top roller will come off or it'll slide out so that I can get um, welded rings and things in and out of there. Uh, and so I don't have to try to stretch them over that roller. Another feature that I should probably point out is that, um, you know, these handles here, those come off. So if I want to, uh, if I've got something really wide that I'm rolling and it ends up, you know, part way through, well, it would obviously hit that. So I made it so that they can just pop off and then they won't be in the way. There won't be any interference or anything there. Um, both sides do that. Uh, it's just something I thought would be, you know, an easier way to um, avoid having a collision with, um, you know, parts that I'm trying to roll. So one thing that I wanted to do for this is I wanted to make it almost all bolt together. Uh, I wanted pretty much the entire thing to bolt together, and it pretty much does with an exception of, you know, these plates here. Those are welded together but so that they all pop off in one unit. Um, but pretty much everything else, there's a lot of bracing underneath that you actually can't see. There's a couple of tubes that go back and forth through there, um, or pipe, I guess. And then this whole thing bolts onto the cart. So the cart's actually separate uh, from the roller itself, and it bolts onto there. I wanted to do this just so it would be easier to disassemble if I needed to uh, fix a roller. I didn't know if they were going to be strong enough um, when I built it or if I was going to have to make any adjustments. So I thought it would be easier to make it a bolt together design rather than welding it together. And when I take parts in to get powder coated, I can have it all disassembled so that it can get in, you know, the, in the back side of every single part that's on this um, and won't miss any spots when they're sandblasting or powder coating it. It's all powered by this Harbor Freight um, pipe threader and so far it's worked really well. Um, I've got two chains going between um, the bottom rollers there. I've got two, I should say, sprockets with a chain going across uh, the rollers there. And then this is just held in place by one of the existing bolt holes. Uh, I just put a threaded rod through there and a little coupling nut on the end so that I can take this pipe threader off. Um, it's not permanently mounted. It takes like you know 10 seconds to pull it off and use it for something else, um, which I'll probably use for a tubing roller eventually. The reason that um, these are sticking out further on both sides than they need to be, I'll probably cut them down eventually. But I originally wanted to do that so that I could put flat stock and or sorry, put tubing um, and make dies that go on the ends of those. But I figured partway through the project. It was better just to have a dedicated plate roller because if I'm trying to do tubing on it, I have to have a lot more um, room than I had originally planned for and a lot more travel so that I can, you know, make tighter hoops and, you know, get two inch tubing in there. You got to have um, enough space there once you put dies in there. And so I decided it's probably not best. So um, I decided not to turn these down on the lathe like I did the top roller just because once I made them and I stuck them in the uh, in you know in their place with the bushings and I looked it they really weren't running out of you know they were they're were running pretty true I should say um, they're not really out around that bad they I was worried that it would keep you know it wouldn't keep constant pressure on the plate but it actually does I've been able to roll uh, really true rings with it and it doesn't really give me any issues at all. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll roll a piece here. I've got I I should have videoed some other things that I've rolled. Um, I can roll about 30 inches of 3 16ths on this, uh, so it, it's it's pretty capable. I was pretty impressed with it, um, but I don't want to waste a bunch of material right now. Steel prices are going up, so I'm not just going to cut out you know eight feet of 3 16ths or an eight foot piece of 3 16ths that's 30 inches wide just so I can roll a ring. Um, eventually, I'll just I'll throw up some videos of 
Um, you know, when I do have jobs come along that I'm, I'm rolling larger diameters or larger or thicker materials that are wider, uh, I'll throw some videos up with those. But for now, I'm just going to roll this piece of 10 gauge. Um, I don't know, it's like six inches wide just to show you it can roll a ring. But I have done um, thicker stuff. I just took a load of scrap to the scrap yard, and so I don't have, um, you know, a bunch of extra material laying around that I can just afford to, to roll up into a, a ring just to show you for the video. But um, it does do about 30 inches of 3 16ths, which I was, again, thrilled with. Um, that's, you know, bigger than what I'll need most of the time. Uh, if I do need something bigger, my steel supplier, they just got, the same day I finished this, I went in to get some more steel, and they got an 8-foot roller that'll roll quarter inch. So um, if I ever need anything larger rolled, I guess I always have theirs to go to. So to set it, all I have to do, I just put uh, whatever piece of material I'm rolling in there and I tighten it down. I almost use this piece of material like a feeler gauge um, just so I can tell uh, you know, how, how much pressure it's putting on it and I make that equal across both sides. I do have dials that I scribed in using my air scribe on the plasma table on both sides that um, show every quarter inch. Now since these are 12 threads per inch, that means you know within each quarter inch I can have three rotations. Um, so it, they're actually pretty accurate. Uh, they work really well. I'm glad. I'm definitely glad I put them on there um, just to keep track. You know, and especially if I'm doing a lot of repetitive parts, it helps me when I'm done. When I finish one, I can look at that gauge on the side and say, okay, I need to go to two and three quarter inches in depth, and um, it'll give me that radius in this material. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just. Um, stick this through and see if I can feel where it's you know where, where it's gonna uh, pinch that and I've got on both sides of these I've got gas struts so when I crank this up it automatically brings this roller up so I don't have to manually do it uh, that was kind of an afterthought I should have thought of that earlier it wasn't the best design um, but it works just fine so I can go ahead and stick that through on both sides Crank these up a little bit. Let's see, we gotta be getting close. One other thing I like about these is this right here. So once I have them square, once it's squared up across the top, um, it has equal pressure on this. I can roll cones with this too. If I crank one side down and not the other, it'll roll, uh, roll a cone, um, but I like once that I get these you know, paired up, I can take this off and make sure that they're both pointing straight. And then I know, okay, from there on, if I do two cranks down over here, I can do two cranks down over there and I can keep track of where my location is supposed to be at all times. So I'm just gonna double check this and we're about the same pressure on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the middle. And I know you should probably pre-bend and things like that. Um, this is just a piece that I am you know, using just to show you guys, so I'm not going to worry about squaring everything up. I'm going to crank both sides down, and I can roll it. material on thicker stuff I always roll it back and forth you know twice before I crank it down again it's thinner material um, I found it doesn't really you know change that much but I can go ahead and crank both sides down again there's one two half one half two and then just flip the switch and it comes back. And we're 
getting close, so I'm just going to crank it down. Um, let's do a half a turn and see where we're at. So there's a half turn there and a half turn there and come back the other direction. speed through this real quick I just ran it through twice more just because um, just to make sure everything's running true there and then uh, I'll go ahead and get it pulled off there we go There's our ring. We've got a couple of flat spots here where you know you should really expect that um, on something like this. Normally I would just cut those off, weld them up, and then um, that's why I need to put those pins in there so that it becomes a little bit easier to pull this side off. You just pull the roller through or you don't even have to pull the roller through. You pretty much pull that bushing off, um, off of this side, sorry. Uh, you pull it off this side and then that ring would you know, pull out or you could put that ring on there. Um, once you've welded that seam and then roll it so it's true and then you'd be good to go. Well, whether if it was what to do or what not to do, I hope you're able to learn something from this video. Upcoming videos, I'm going to be showing you my 35 ton press brake that I built and a 4x8 CNC plasma table.